everybody. This is another tutorial video for biostatistics. Um, this video will cover the realm of complex ANOVAs, which are um, statistics that use two or more predictor variables that are categorical, and you have one response variable that is numerical. So the first, there's two kind of versions of complex ANOVAs. You have nested ANOVAs and crossed ANOVAs. So this video is going to cover a realm of nested ANOVAs. So with any other um, statistical analyses, you're going to first set your working directory. And you can do this the same way that I'm doing it right now. Whatever folder that you have your data saved to, you use that and select it. Once you have your working directory set, you need to install the package car. Um, and you need this in order to run some of the um, models that we're going to be using. So I already have it on my computer, but if you need to install it, you can either use this code here, or you can just go into packages, click on install, type in car, click on it, and then press install. But again, if you already have it, you can just run library car to pull it up. All right, so the data set that we're going to work with is what I call the Kearney's data set. Um, and we're going to look at it first so we can gain an understanding for the material and what we're actually working with. So first we're going to call it for the CSV. And then we can see what the data looks like. Okay, so the Curdy's data set has four variables. You have Dujiza, Site, Season, and S4 Dugs or S4 Dujizas. Um, so there are six sites that were used in the study, and then two seasons, winter and summer. So when we pull up the summary, actually we'll do the string, that way you can see it a little easier. Um, you can see how R is treating each of these variables. So uh, we see that season is treated as a factor, which is good. Dujija and S4 Dujija are both numerical value, values, and that's how R is uh, recognizing them, which is good. But we have a bit of a problem here with sight. Um, because there's numbers, sight is being coded or um, seen by R as an integer, which is not what we want. We want sight to be a factor like season. So we have to code for that, and we can. Um, Coerce co R into treating it as a factor by using the as.factor function. So we're going to run that line here, creating a new attrib attribute called Curtis dollar sign site, basically telling R to treat the site variable in the Curtis data set as a factor. And we can basically go up here and then run the new summary to make sure that all is well and good. And we can see that site is now um, a factor, which is what we want. OK, so um, with complex ANOVAs, again, whether you're running a nested or a crossed ANOVA, you have to check the assumption of normality. So we're going to do that. And we're going to do that by looking at the box plots. So Dujija is our response variable. But there are two quote unquote Dujija variables. We have Dujija, this Dujija, and then we have S4, I don't even know how to pronounce that, Dujiz, whatever, Dujija. Um, so this S4 represents uh, the log 4 of Dujija, and that's what, um, that's a transformation that the authors did. So both of these could be a response variable and we don't know which one we're going to use yet. So let's take a look at both of them. So first, we'll look at the box plot um, with the untransformed Dujija as the response. Um, and by setting sight here as the predictor, we can separate or make different box plots for the Dujija populations per site. So we're going to run that. And looking over here at the box plot, um, again, looking for normality or kind of judging that, we see that these box plots don't 
they don't look very normal, but it definitely has hues, and a couple of them have them have them have outliers that could be affecting the data. So let's look at the box plot with the untransform with sorry with the transformed response, which is the S4 Dugesius, or whatever you pronounce it. Okay, so this is the series of box plots. Again, these are each of these um, integers here, um, or factors as we've now coded them, represent sites. So this is site one, site two, site three, site four, site five, six, six. You get the gist of it. So with the S, the log four transformation, these are the box plots that are created. Honestly, to me, they don't look that much better. But the authors um, thought that they looked better, they liked the data better with the transformation, so they stuck with it. And for the sakes of um, this tutorial, we're going to do the same thing and just run with the log4 transformation of the Dujija data set. All right. So the next thing we are going to do is fit the model. Now. Um, in the Curtis Curtis study, uh, different sites were tested during two seasons. And as I said before, those two seasons were summer and winter. But since the sites were not repeated, or in other words, you didn't have or weren't using the same sites in both summer and winter, we are in the realm of nested or hierarchical ANOVAs. So essentially, site is, or in other words, site is nested within season. So if you wanted to write that out, you would have um, following the BA formula, you would have um, site is nested in season. Okay, so we're going to use um, the AOV function to fit in ANOVA. And we're going to build a new model called model.curdies. And we're going to use, again, the, the log transformed um, response variable, or S for Dugis as or Dugisia as um, the response variable. So to indicate to R that site is nested within season, there's two um, different kind of uh, codings that you can use. You can either use what's shown here, which essentially states um, factor one, which is here season, backslash factor two, or site. Or you can do as what's represented here, where you have factor one plus factor two, or site, percent sign in percent, basically meaning within factor one or season. So you can use either one of those. You can either use the backslash or you can use this little percent sign, as long as you remember which factor is which. Okay, so I'm just going to run with the first one. So now that I've built my new model, saying that um, site is nested in season, I can look at the summary to get the results. Okay, so the output that we get, we get this nice table. We have degrees of freedom, the sum of the squares, mean squares, f value or test statistic, and p value. And then over here, we have our variables, or basically the variables that match up with the hypotheses. So um, this is factor one for season. And then we have um, here site nested in season. And R, when it gives you the output, represents the nested, um, I don't know what you would call it, but it basically depicts nested in as um, these two dots. And then you also have residuals. Now the residuals represent the error term or your experimental unit. Okay, so with nested ANOVAs, there's two null hypotheses that are associated. The first one is that there is 
no effect of A or your factor 1. And the second is that there is no effect of B nested in A. Or, in other words, there is no effect of factor 2 nested in factor 1. So for us, it would be there is no effect of site nested in season. So looking at our p-values here, again, um, using the 95% confidence interval, we see that there is a significant result for season, but not for site nested in season. So we have a p-value that's less than 0.5, sorry, 0.05 for season, but greater than 0.05 for uh, site nested in season. So based on those results, um, there is a significant effect of season, but there is no effect of site nested in season. So in other words, we reject the null hypothesis that there is no effect of A, which is in this case is season, and we fail to reject the null hypothesis that there is no effect of B nested in A, or in this case, there is no effect of site nested in season. All right, so the last thing we want to do is like a diagnostic test, um, checking for the one other assumption. Um, actually, nested ANOVAs have three assumptions, uh, independent sampling, uh, normality, and homogeneity of variance. So we're going to evaluate the residuals to check for that third assumption, the homogeneity of variance. So we're going to do that visually creating a residuals versus fitted values plot. I'm going to run that. So you get an output that kind of looks like this. You have these bars, these vertical bars of little white circles. Now, in order to interpret this, like if you had something that showed like an, an even spread, typically you'd want to see something where there was an an even spread or equal distribution of white circles across each of these vertical bars. And I mean, there isn't a lot of spread, but you also don't have a lot of clumping. You don't have like a lot of white dots down at this end and some up here. So there, it's not evenly spread, but it's also not completely unbalanced. Um, it looks a little unbalanced, which makes the test less robust, but otherwise it's nothing horrible. So that's it for nested ANOVAs.